What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to be putting some crown molding on my walls in my cinema room. So basically I saw this picture as well as the corresponding YouTube video, which I'll put in the description as well. Um, but basically I want it to kind of be a little bit lower than the wall to do some indirect lighting. So we'll go through all the materials that you will need if you want to do this in your own room. Um, as well as the steps to complete it. So let's get to it. So to start out, this is what the cinema room looks like right now. And honestly, I need to fix some of, cause when I first did the trim in here, I did not caulk anything. So it's kind of like a lazy, messy job. And also I used shorter brad nails at the time. So I could probably, you know, fix some of those things. But yeah, this is what the room looks like. Really what we're going to be focusing on is this upper section to add some of that crown molding it's going to be a little bit lower so probably the top being right there and then the light is going to shine off of it kind of how like the light is going through there so i'm really excited i think it's going to make the room look even more um you know custom a little bit more cinematic i'm still contemplating if i'm going to leave it white when I put it up or if I'm gonna paint it gray so you guys will see it but yeah just wanted to show you the before so yeah I have my mom here she's going to be helping us complete this project today because mm -hmm, that's what I do I help you execute your vision exactly so step one of this project was to do all of my planning so I already did that I took measurements of all the walls I'm wondering though if I need to do a another measurement so maybe you can do that for me absolutely if you would like to um so you like it <laughs> so my mom is going to remeasure the room i'll put a picture right here of what my original measurements of everything was in order for me to figure out how much of the molding and the um mdf boards that i need to get so we'll just triple check that before we start cutting stuff let me take you into the garage and show you what materials you need oh exciting into the garage As far as the materials that I got, so there's three main pieces that I bought and I bought seven of each because they were eight feet long in order to fit in my car. And I'll put the measurements on the screen as well as in the description. But first, this is this MDF panel. Then I think this is one and a half inches, but this is another MDF panel, slightly smaller. And then, most importantly, the crown molding. Instead of using an MDF version, I am using a finger jointed pine. And basically what we're going to be doing is putting them layered on top of each other. And I'll show you an example really quick. Like so. On top of the wall, obviously a lot neater than that. Um, which this gives it kind of like a little two step. Um, for the light to sit on top of here and it can reflect off of the wall. So basically that's what we're going to be doing. Before we actually put it on the wall, I'm gonna make just a mock-up version of like a small piece so we can get all of our measurements correct as far as where we want it on the wall. Then we can start nailing everything down. I also got some cable wires because I am not um, an electrician or keen on cutting into my walls to feed wires through. So when the light strip comes to one side, I'm gonna just drop it down and hide it with some cable covers that I can later paint. So not the nicest or cleanest look, but it's going to be behind the door, so we should be okay. And then lastly, the tools that you will need. I will insert pictures here as we go through everything. And yeah, let's get to it. It has to go a little bit below because the light has to shine off. Uh huh. Do you think you need to do two or three? Consider it two. I mean, three comes out way too far. Comes down. Uh huh. So we're trying to figure out if we're gonna do just two of these steps, like one little step and then the crumb molding, or the three. So I'm gonna go up there and look. Yeah, I think just two is good. Uh -huh. I think just two should work. Okay, so at this point, I'm cutting at a 45 degree angle on this piece of the smaller. Um, MDF panel and just cutting at a 45 degree angle on both sides that I want to mesh within each other. So here you can see I'm putting it up against the wall and since this is an inner corner, I did um, an inner cut. So it is slanted a little bit on the left side as you can see. 
then I just checked with my level and it, this is helpful to have with a partner. And with my mom holding it in place, I was able to nail it in with my nailer. Okay, so day one, we got the first strip up there. All we have to do is do everything else and then add the molding. So after adding the molding, we can fill in the holes, sand, uh, caulk, do paint, all that stuff. So yeah, I'm not gonna get to any of that tonight, but I think it's gonna look great. Really where we left off, I created like a little beveled, angled cut on that wall. So I need to get this wall. This wall, I think we measured was 76 inches and then do a slant cut inward for an inward angle. And then on this side, I need to do an outer cut angle. So I really need to be smart about how I do these cuts when I go downstairs. Um, but yeah, and then pretty much that's the system that I'm going to do across the entire room. So not sure how much I need to actually show of that, but that's the step that we're completing is just putting on all of the base trim. All right, so we had our two sides cut. I'm gonna go and put this one up, hope that it works, and then I'll be able to get a good groove going, a good system, and finish, whoop, finish the rest of the wall to start getting the molding up, so. Cross fingers. So because I was working with shorter pieces, I was able to handle a lot of these myself, um, just holding up a level myself and nailing them in. And as you can see, I was doing my little happy dance because I was feeling good. Perfecto. Now that I did that, I already worked with doing an inner corner worked with an outer corner. I just need to do the other side. I can rock and roll. I can get this whole thing done. So, feeling good. A little hot, but let's do this. So on this side, you will see I left a little bit of a gap because that is where I am going to feed all of the LED lights and let them fall down and cover them with the cable covers. YouTube world, long time no see. So what are you doing, mom? Let them know. I am actually marking the uh, areas so that we can ensure that the palm molding is lined up properly and so that it's a nice balance and it looks very nice and neat. So that's what we're doing right now and I am just going around and lighting everything up so that Alexis can just apply the crown molding and it looks perfect. Yep. So once again, great time to have a partner, especially with longer pieces like this. Um, so we just lined it up to the markings that my mom put on where we wanted the molding to sit because we wanted it to be a little bit lower than the ceiling, not like typical molding because we are going to be doing that in direct lighting. And then when we had the other side, we used a shorter piece to make sure that they could actually connect nicely into the corner because we were having some trouble with that. And then we just took a longer piece and connected it to that shorter piece. So kind of working in bits and pieces. It's gonna take a little bit more to cover up the cracks later on, but this was the easiest for us. My mom is covering the holes. Yeah. Oh, this is how everything's looking so far. Just need to finish this last section. So for the lights, I used these LED lights that I bought from Amazon. It was a two pack and I'll put it in the description box. But basically I just fed it up the wall and sat them behind the crown molding. Basically, the ledge was already there. It was super easy. Um, I didn't use any of the stickies. I just laid it flat. Um, but as you can see here, it immediately gave the ambiance and the vibe I was going for. So I was super, super happy and excited. So I just took um, the lighting and basically wired it across the entire room. 
since it came with two pieces, one piece did almost fit with everything, but then I used the other side to feed in from the opposite direction. And this is how it was looking once that was installed. Doing some last touch ups with this fast and fine dap um, spackling putty knife thing. And then we'll use my caulk, silicone caulk to caulk along all the edges and then we'll paint. This is the paint color, it's called Dovetail. We got it in a semi-gloss so that it works on the molding. So it might look a little bit different than the walls because the walls are a satin finish, but should be good. So we're gonna open it up. Ooh, it looks light, huh? Yeah, nice. I like it. We have to mix it though. What's your favorite thing to do DIY wise? I don't know that I have a favorite, <laughs> but I like all of them. Category. Of it has to be the paneling. Yeah, that's what is mine. Because I feel like that takes it from basic to custom. Yeah. You know, and it's like, wow. Yeah, I agree. That's I, my favorite too. Yeah. That looks so damn good. Oh my gosh. I know, I'm glad we did it. Yay, I'm glad you did it. This was your 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 vision. All right, you guys, so we have all of it painted at the top. We just have to get the bottoms. So I'm thinking one of us will be up here using this like edger that helps you paint. What is it, a paint guide tool and put it so that we don't have to do tape, but you know, not trying to mess up the wall too much, although they're the same color, one is a different finish and get all the bottoms and then we're going to be done. Done, 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 Yep, all you have to do is put this guide below um, the first piece of trim, put it snug against the wall and then paint and it made it super easy for us to not make a mess. Next is putting the cable covers in this corner. First, I just um, slid off the top part of the cable cover. Then I took off the back sticky piece because it has like this double-sided tape along it. Um, and then I just placed it directly under where the molding is and where the lighting is starting to feed out of the molding. And then I just pressed it firmly into the crease of the wall. Um, and then from there, I was able to just hide the lights and then put the cover back on as you can see it's scooting back up because I just lit it up and it was like so satisfying and the perfect fit so I did end up using both cable covers uh, for the second one I just cut it to size and then once I fed all of the lights in there I just snapped the top part of the cover in place and it was super easy and really at this point, we just had to do our final touches. So just painted the cable covers and then I got these red um, curtains. So I changed out the old gray ones that I had and put these new red blackout curtains and it gives that, you know, old cinema vibe. So they looked super good. Finished all of that up and the room was complete. All right, guys, so that's it. That is the indirect lighting, molding, 
thing that I did in my cinema room. So if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you think that I should leave these trim and doors white as is, or if I should paint it all gray like everything else. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think. But yes, I love how it came out. I'm so proud of both me and my mom for tackling this project just because I've never done crown molding before or something like this and it came out exactly how I envisioned it. And I love it. So I think next I'm just going to be changing my little concessions sign over here right now. I just DIY'd this with a pegboard and some hooks. It says movie snacks. So I think I'm gonna up that a little bit, make it a little nicer. Um, and if I keep the trim and the door white, I think I'm going to update the DIY sconces that I made and make these uh, white of some sort. But as you guys remember, these have push lights that go like that. But I just always have to, you know, update the batteries. But yeah, you guys, it's definitely a vibe in here. It feels super cinematic now with my lights. I feel like I'm in a small theater. So thank you guys for watching and supporting my channel. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. Turn on your post notifications to be updated every time I upload. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Um, and feel free to comment down any other questions if I didn't cover certain things within this video. Let's chat. Yeah, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.